Hello and welcome to Warhammer Wednesday. Grab your favourite hot beverage and a snack. In this case, a coconut macaroon. Is it a cake? Is it a biscuit? Cakes go hard. If they're off, biscuits go soft. That's the difference. So grab your delicious snacks and join me as I review the Talons of the Emperor box set. Okay, so a quick summary first of all. Uh, this box, uh, I think, is £95. Um, it comes with a Land Raider from 1999, I think. Uh, the new Adeptus Custodes uh, models, five of them. And then the Contemptor Dreadnought that was in the Betrayal at Calf uh, box set uh, that everybody loved. A Rhino. It's the old Rhino from the start of the 2000s, I think. And then the new Sisters of Silence uh, models that were in... The, again, Prospero Burns box set. To show you the models here on the back, those three models are exactly the same as if you were to buy them separate. They're just sprayed gold. There's no extra iconography or anything to do with uh, custodes on them at all. They're just sprayed gold and with bits of red. The same goes with the custodes and the sisters. Exactly the same as if you were to now get them separate, which I think the custodes are 35 and I think the sisters are 25 or 30. I want to say 30 though. The only sort of draw for a lot of people would have been the codexes. Okay, so actually made a big thing about this. They said, you know, oh, the codexes, they're only going to be available in this box set. And for me, that was quite a big draw because I was expecting sort of, you know, 50 pages, maybe 100 pages. Well, 50 pages each, something like that. Um, but no. And I'll say right away, save you some time and, and money and things, uh, it's not worth buying the box set just for these two codexes. Um, they are tiny, and I'll, I'll go through them in a minute. I'm not going to do a separate video. This is going to be the full review, including those books in this. Um, so it's not worth it getting, getting it just for those. And the reason why I say that is because Games Workshop, believe it or not, when they brought out um, Prospero Burns, they actually brought out the, the rules, which I printed off uh, with my amazing printer. Um, and it hasn't changed. The only thing that they have is this Ages of the Emperor um, rule, which basically gives them a five plus invulnerable. Well, five plus for the um, Land Raider Rhino and uh, Contemptor. Uh, so nothing really has changed uh, at all. And these rules were free at the time. Uh, the only thing you're getting is a small, small bit of backstory, it, but it's literally like about five or six pages and it's not full A4 pages. It's, you know, half a page here, half a page there. It, it doesn't go into the same depth as uh, Inferno. If you want to know about custodians and things, get this book, um, definitely. It more than makes up for it. And also read uh, The Emperor of Mankind, which I'm reading at the moment. Um, if you want your uh, sort of backstory fluff, custodes, fix as it as it were um but the these books don't do them justice uh they don't really explain um much they just talk about how uh gillyman's are now here and uh 300 of the custodes are, are left at the palace to protect um the emperor's body um well he's the emperor isn't he um and then the rest of them the other sort of 9700 or whatever uh are now going with him to sort of bring the fight to all, all of the Emperor's uh, enemies. So it is about as vague as that. Um, and the sisters, it just talks about how some of them went off, had a load of babies, and maybe they have the pariah gene, because they're extremely rare, sisters, um, the, the psychic null maidens. Uh, one in one trillion chance of, uh, of uh, psychic nulls. Um, so, yeah, it doesn't really go into much depth about either of those two factions. And uh, I put missed opportunity. I still do think it is a missed opportunity. Um, but I'll talk about that later. Uh, let's have a look at the models. Because I so happen to have a Land Raider that I built um, not that long ago. It's going to be exactly the same um, as what you get in your kit. Uh, you know, your door opens and closes. Your uh, turrets swivel. Um, and you can put, you know, your different weapons and things. Rhino is going to be exactly the same. I have a painted model look. Um, so that's that. You have the custodian guard. You have your uh, contemptor dreadnought. Oh, 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 ah, ah, ah. <laughs> Not that one. Um, is, is this one. Um, yeah, which I obviously haven't sprayed gold. Um, and that's just one I've, I've got laying around. Uh, but there you go. That, that's all your models in the box. And then you get the two co codexes uh, or codices, whatever you want to call them. We'll have a look at these in a moment. Uh, but first of all, the models, obviously the Custodian Guard, are, are incredible. Um, however, you can get them separate now. 
The sisters are pretty decent, but you can get them separate. This Land Raider is, is still okay. Obviously, there's some nice variants of Land Raider about at the moment. Um, the Rhino, well, it's a Rhino, um, and there's just something on my peripheral vision there. Let's just move him about. All right, um, yeah, so all the models here are, are not that bad. Uh, the custodians, are, like I say, are, are incredible. But I think you're going to be separated in a few camps when you decide to, to buy this set. Um, there's going to be one camp, which a lot of people seem to fall into, where they, they look at this perceived value, um, whereby they look at all the models in, in, in a box, and then they add all the models up how much they cost separately, and then if the cost of the box is then less than the model separately, it's a good deal, or it's value. No, it doesn't necessarily work that way. There's the perceived value, because you might not need some of the models in the in the box set. Okay, I'll just move them there. Um, and also you need to factor in that Games Workshop have been upping their prices year on year. You never see them decrease the prices, you never see any box deals. Um, the way they do their box deals is, uh, you know, like, like with the Knights Renegade, where they put two, two knights, not, not even two full knights, um, but two knights together, and they put a few dice in and, and, and an extra game. Obviously, they haven't done that with this. They haven't created a new game for this uh, or any new models. They've just thrown all the, all the existing models into a box, and there you go. And yeah, it is going to be cheaper than buying the models separate. And if you're new to 40k uh, and you like these shining gold super space marines pretty much, and you've managed to avoid this Age of Sigma thing, um, which have similarly gold painted men in big armor, then um, yeah, it might it might obviously be for you. But if you're a, a normal sort of hobbyist and you've had these models before, you've had the Prospero Burns uh, set, then you're not missing out on anything by not getting these codexes. Because like I say, the rules are free online, and actually online you, you get more rules. Um, I thought there'd be some extra fancy rules for the Land Raider and Rhino. There aren't. Uh, the rules on the internet, you get um, you get a couple of task forces, so there's a formation there. Then you get a Golden Legion task force, which is one to three, and then they have this Shield of the Emperor. That's not in the codex, why not? I thought there'd be an HQ in there. But... So you're not really getting much more than if you choose to buy all the models separately. Uh, and if you're just after custodians, um, this box set doesn't really give you anything extra than just buying a box of custodians, um, in my opinion. And I think that you'd get a lot more value out of a box set if you bought the Prospero Burns because it's the same price, you get a lot more fluff, yeah, you don't get the individual rules for the Custodian Guard, but you just download them. And obviously you get your 30 Mark III Marines, you get your Tartarus Terminators, you get your sisters still, you get two special characters, um, and you get a, a new game as well. So, a box set compared to box set, that is a better box set, definitely. But if you need all these models and you haven't got them, then yeah, value-wise, you, you know, you get, you're saving a little bit of money. But if you don't need some of the units in this set, you're fine just buying a a set of custodian guard. So that's all I want to say about the models, really. Uh, rules wise, yeah, the Sisters of Silence Codex is tiny. It's 24 pages. It's a thin, thin uh, book. There's not a huge amount of artwork uh, in here. There is literally five pages of fluff just there, about five pages, if you're lucky, five pages. And that's not an awful lot. It's full of sort of text that loops in on itself, uh, there's not a huge amount of description with their history or anything like that. It doesn't go into as much depth as, as, as you'd want or hope it would do. The data sheets themselves, um, you've got three options, all elites, um, you've got the prosecutors which have bolt guns, the vigilators that have the execution of great blades, and the witch seekers that have the flamers, and all three of them have to have the same weapon. So the prosecutors, they can only have the bolt gun. None of them can have a, a blade or anything like that. They've got close combat weapons, but none of them can have the execution great blade. Um, likewise with the vigilators, none of them can have uh, a flamer. And the same for witch seekers, um, none of them can have a bolt gun. So you're going to be stuck with five of the same type of model. There's not a huge amount of variation. The legs are all going to be exactly the same. Um, the swords are quite similar, bolt guns even similar too, and the flamers, 
very similar and it really limits you i think that's a real shame it limits you to um the posability it really limits you um to have the same same squad uh it sort of wants you to buy three sets of them um in a way the rhino just rhino sprayed gold but it has this um psychic abomination and bane of psychers uh, rules so it's like 10 points more for that um then you've got some command benefits and that's it i mean not much at all uh no hq no sort of heavy support it's just those those two two things really elites and and fast attack that's it so it's a bit of a shame and the custodes is even more of a shame the the fluff just talks about how there were 10,000 of them that their sole job is to protect the emperor uh this is this is the fluff look so you, you just get a little bit at the bottom two pages there two pages there done that's it so sort of four and a half pages you could say it's a real shame and a real missed opportunity i mean it definitely helps with your paint work i'd probably say but you can watch videos and stuff for that now the data sheets two pages and you're done it's literally just the custodian guard the contemptor and the land raider just just the three that is it and the custodian guard they've all got the guardian spears and then you can swap any any of them can can have uh, sentinel blades which is fine and they can have the custodes vexilla and there are five of them whereas in inferno there's you can have three um and they're very limited in terms of oh they must have blades or they must have guardian spears um the contemptor it's the same stats as a normal contemptor and, and believe me guys i've i've looked in my in my codexes and stuff uh, exactly the same but it's got the Aegis of the Emperor and Deep Strike. Um, they're the only difference. Uh, it's venerable, but it doesn't have any more attacks or any, any different stat line. Uh, Aegis of the Emperor just means that uh, vehicles get a five plus and vulnerable save, and then models get Eternal Warrior. Models get Eternal Warrior. They had Eternal Warrior right here in the free rules before but they've just called it something else cost the same points the same stats and everything they just called it something different and sold it to you no hq or anything like that the only elite is your uh, venerable contemptor and then the land raider and without an upgrade sprue like um you know death watch got uh, I, I just don't think that they fit in the aesthetic at all i mean look look does that really fit in the aesthetic I, I, even sprayed gold, even sprayed in the same gold, I don't think it would fit. I mean, look. Really? I mean, it's up to you. Uh, if it was me in 40k, I wouldn't spray one of these gold. I'd buy one of these, um, have him equipped with a spear or a, a sentinel blade and call him a, a venerable contemptor if you really wanted to use one. Um, and that would be absolutely fine. I'd be absolutely fine you, you doing that because these just fit with the aesthetic so much and yes not everybody can afford to pay 56 pounds for a forge world miniature which is sort of more than half the price of of this whole box set but i think it's justified i really do um compared to the standard one that you'd, you'd get in the set so yeah no hqs or anything like that no jet bikes um no no fast attack tanks palace tanks and then they've got the golden legion task force and their weapons they've got the storm shields which are, i suppose better than the uh, presidium shields but the presidium you can re-roll your five plus and their storm shields you get a three plus invulnerable so no adrathic weapons where have they gone to no uh, coronas grav tanks no hq so no like you know proper shield captain i mean i know you've got shield captain there within the within the unit but uh, no, no HQ. I, I mean, I really do think it's a missed opportunity. I think they should have had some kind of upgrade sprue, similar to Death Watch. Um, we could add, add some icons, some uh, extra um, eagles or uh, scrolls or something like that for the, for the tanks, both the tanks and the Dreadnought. Maybe have an extra sprue for its weapons, like a spear or um, a different claw or i don't know it's hard to roll that in glitter it really is um and an hq unit you know like a, a plastic miniature um that's unique to this set but as it stands there's nothing unique to this set 
other than you save a little bit of money if you were going to buy all these things separate. The codexes are even a unique thing to the set because um, like I say, rules have been available for free for uh, months and months and months, sort of four or five months now. So in summary, it really depends on what sort of camp you're in. If you're in the camp where you're going to buy all these models anyway and it's nice to get a bit of a discount and then buying separately, then go ahead. But if you're just looking at this as a, you know, to bolster up your custodian guard force uh, or even just for the codexes, then I really would skip, save your uh, £95 and put it towards the £135 Thunderhawk because I just feel that like there is something missing with this set. You know, that's what I do. Uh, I buy these things and I give you my honest opinion. If I don't think it's good, I'll say it's not good. And I'll give you my reasons. That's with everything, Forge World Games Workshop, you name it. What are your thoughts on the set? I know people have been very vocal already on, on my unboxing, so thank you. Please do put your comments below, as always. Thank you for joining me today. Thank you for watching. The Emperor Protects.